Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. It's been a little while since I've done a video. I'm glad I'm uh, back. I took a bit of a vacation and then caught a very bad cold, so please excuse my voice, uh, which is a bit raspy. So, I don't know about your location, but Ottawa's had a hell of a summer. Too hot, too humid, you know, very, very uncomfortable. And many, many places have had torrential rains, heat waves, droughts, crop failures, you know, you name it. Wildfires, it's been a record year for, for wildfires. You know, when a region undergoes a long and persistent drought, then all of the vegetation dries out and it's like, uh, it's bone dry. And uh, any spark, whether from, you know, a human, <coughs> caused fire not being put out properly, you know, spark from a highway, transmission lines, uh, swaying and high winds, sparking, um, lightning. I mean, we're obviously getting more lightning um, in these uh, extreme weather events. So anything that triggers the fire, and uh, there's lots of forests near residential areas. So, you know, Greece had their massive horrendous fires and then uh, California um, the Reading fire and we got new phenomena occurring uh, fire tornado or <coughs> fire NATO thousand foot base uh, like an EF3 type uh, winds massive winds which then spun off from the fire and damaged areas that weren't even that weren't even uh, didn't even experience the fire so and uh, the BC, British Columbia fires, um, record numbers of fires, and the smoke is traveling across North America. We had the smoke going to Seattle, basically uh, being horrendously bad in, 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 in uh, major cities on, on the West Coast. You know, we've had warmer ocean waters in the Pacific uh, across to Hawaii, and there's been a track of, of uh, hurricanes coming across and the latest one, you know, drenched um, large parts of the uh, Hawaiian Islands. Uh, it could have been worse, <coughs> but it, you know, it tapered off and fortunately turned. Um, and I think, uh, you know, earlier in the summer, there was another uh, hurricane that was tracking out that way. So, you know, we basically, we're taking hits in the quality of life in many places. So, so uh, write in the comments section about your own personal experience uh, this, this past summer, whether it be experiencing some of these heat waves or fires or, you know, any, any other conditions. I did a video, a couple of videos on tropical, on monsoon, like, Tropical monsoons no longer just happen in the tropics, right? We're seeing this type of monsoonal behavior at much higher latitudes in the tropics, <coughs> even going up into the far north um, in the, in the arc, you know, above the Arctic Circle. We've had reports from um, some people that watch my videos from northern Norway and Finland talking about the... Uh, you know, when, when it rains, it pours, basically. Um, you get this tremendous rainfall, and then you get no rain for long periods of time. So the, the conditions are, are, completely, um, are completely changing. And, you know, it's well known that, these, um, that air pollution, for example, and, and uh, heat waves, you know, they, they, they're real detrimental to human health, to physical health, especially in the very young who are unable to sweat until they're older. Um, people that are taking medications, there's a lot of adverse reactions um, when, there's, when there's heat waves and high humidity. And also older people, they're more susceptible to uh, problems with heat waves. So the mortality rates in, you know, especially in big cities where you get the heat island effect adding to the um, adding to the uh, temperatures, making, making the cities two or three degrees Celsius warmer than, say, the surrounding regions. Those are, those are causing uh, huge problems, you know, to large numbers of people in cities. 
Um, and these heat waves up at higher latitudes um, are, a lot of people don't have air conditioning, so they're suffering. They're just not used to this type of <coughs> temperature, excuse me. Um, so, but not only are these physical effects, um, you know, they're pretty obvious, but also we're finding, you know, obviously, you know, quality of life is deteriorating. You know, you can't go out jogging because your whole city is under smoke alert and people, you have to wear masks to keep out those uh, PM 2.5 particles that are smaller than 2.5 micron that can lodge deep inside your lungs and uh, cause a lot more health problems in the larger particles that can't make it so far into your lungs. Um, but there's also lots of, um, so there's lots of um, physical effects. There's also, um, and this is from, you know, things like the smoke, high temperatures, high humidity, higher levels of CO2. All of these things are causing, they're, they're chipping away at people's intellect at people's ability to learn. A number of different studies have come out very recently showing, you know, whether it be elevated levels of CO2, um, you know, that are typical in a lot of indoor meeting rooms, for example, if there's not sufficient ventilation, <coughs> they cause people to be restless and not pay attention and tired, be tired. So, so learning ability is severely degraded not only with higher CO2 levels, a direct effect, but also with higher temperatures. So when these, uh, you know, very big study on China and uh, the US, I believe, and when it's, when there's very, very hot, um, hot temperatures and there's no air conditioning, you know, when, you know, when kids are writing standardized tests, <coughs> the ones that are in air conditioned School rooms um, do far, far better than the ones that are in hot and humid conditions in buildings where there's no air conditioning. So this is a, this is a, uh, you know, rich versus poor um, type thing. You know, the richer schools would tend to have the air conditioning, the poor ones not. So this is a big, um, this is a big thing that is causing, that causes differences in scores of, of students. And uh, so, so basically there's all of these um, things that are going on, you know, uh, the extremes are only going to get worse as we continue to lose Arctic sea ice. The, the big thing this summer uh, with the sea ice is it seems to be way, way thinner than it has been in, in, in other years. Um, all the multi-year ice is gone. It's just basically a thin layer of ice. <coughs> no connection to the shorelines, really. Um, the ice that was connected and piled up and therefore thicker, um, just off the Gre northern Greenland coast, um, basically was pulled away. And then, uh, you know, earlier in the year, and then uh, thinner ice formed in that region, and then it was pulled away a second time. And uh, pulled the, the recent pulling away the second time has made a huge, uh, you know, a lot of media coverage, a lot of press. Uh, but it was preconditioned to do that from um, earlier um, in the year when, when, it, when it pulled away. Also, um, you know, I'll do some separate videos on, on Arctic uh, ice, but the, the ocean water surrounding the ice, of course, with churning and wave action, it becomes mixed and it's saltier um, than the ice that just comes off, than the water, <coughs> the meltwater that just comes off of the existing ice. So, so that water is heated up by the sun, right? Solar absorption is much higher in the seawater because the albedo or reflectance of the water is much lower. The water is dark. It absorbs a lot of the, that solar radiation, heats up, and it's salty. So then, when it um, when wind blows it, un it actually blows it underneath the ice that's left, and underneath under the ice that's left, there's cold, fr cold fresh water just underneath the ice. And it turns out that the warm, salty water that is blown under the ice is not in contact with the ice, it's underneath. So 
Um, but but this is a big concern because what happens during the when when uh, the season changes and the ice starts to reform, there's less melt from underneath and above the ice. It's starting to refreeze, and therefore that warmer water underneath the ice can come up in contact with the ice and and, and keep the thickness from growing. Um, as the air temperatures drop with the seasonal change. Um, this paper very just came out um, and uh, it's definitely worth a more detailed talk in another video. So, you know, what about the human response to all of this? Um, you know, I've always thought that there would be a tipping point in human behavior. There'd be enough of these negative climate caused events occurring you know, large economic costs, um, hits to the global food supply, you know, these droughts and heat waves this summer have done a real number on, on uh, grain production and prices will rise as a result uh, once it trickles through the system. Um, so what about the human re response? I mean, scientists seem to be getting more concerned, you know, if you follow um, various people on Twitter and Facebook and you keep up on the on the latest science, there seems to be higher levels of concern with a lot of the mainstream scientists. Um, but what about, you know, there seems to be more news stories and more coverage of it, although it's very difficult if you just you Google things because, you know, <coughs> Google shows you what you want to see basically, right? It has algorithms so that when you Google something, you get the site. So if you know, climate deniers, Google climate change, they're going to get a lot of different denier sites and stuff. This is one of the huge problems with, uh, you know, with uh, that algorithm. But, you know, what about the politics? What about, you know, it, there, there's a trend right now, a definite trend to governments going far right. Okay, this is a global trend and there, there's a strong feedback uh, there, there, there's a vicious cycle here that we're kind of stuck in. And what's happening is that as climate change worsens, and uh, there's even papers about how areas become uninhabitable due to wet bulb temperature, but <coughs> as climate change uh, worsens, whether it be droughts or torrential rains or, you know, think of sea level rise, um, you know, coastal regions having to... Um, having to people migrate out okay so when people migrate to within a country you know it's not so uh, impactful to other countries but when smaller countries have to have tremendous migration out of these countries into surrounding countries then <coughs> you know the culture in these other countries changes if they have progressive governments they let in a lot of immigrants and then and then there's a backlash. There's there's uh, popular populism. Um, there's uh, you know there's a there, there's a backlash. There's nationalism. People want to build walls. They, there's anti-immigration stuff, and this is typically a right-wing platform. So the right-wing populists get more and more votes, and then the the, the left-wing or progressives that actually talk about taking action on climate change get get voted out and of course you know it's a package deal if you have a right wing um you know anti-immigration protectionist uh party then often they're going to deny climate change they're going to take the words climate change out of all of the government documents so you know we've seen this in <coughs> in in canada recently uh you know in in ontario the province that i live in uh, we had a liberal government for 15 years. Well, less than two years, in, in the last couple of year, year and a half of their mandate, they had a carbon cap and trade, very complex system. Got new government comes in, chops it right away, gets rid of the, all the green stuff, cuts funding to renewables, etc. So this is a real, real problem. When you get progressive governments coming in, they need to act immediately and put in a carbon fee and dividend, a carbon price, um, day one, right? Just implement it. And it can be done the same way in countries around the world um, because of the asymmetry. It's easier to kill things and build things. Anyway, thank you.